to think about it, I found this early in the morning that there wouldn't be anybody out. Hmm. Okay. Hello. About a year ago when I bought my new sewing machine, or newish sewing machine, one of the very first things I wanted to do with it was make some aprons. Because I've been desperately in need of some forever. And every time I see cute ones in stores, I'm like, no, I'm not going to buy some. I can make some, right? And I even found this really cute pattern for its 1940s vintage aprons, hence the title. <laughs> and yet, somehow I kept putting off, putting off, putting off, making them all year. Until now. So, let's get started. So again, here's the pattern I'm going to use. In the 1940s vintage reproduction, as you can see, which is why I do not feel guilty about cutting this, the paper patterns. <laughs> and we'll be using them instead of tracing them out like I did with older ones, because I don't feel right about doing that. I intend to do this style with the pockets and the fan and separate fabrics like that because I kind of like the look of it. But I'm going to add a bib to it because I'm accident prone and I know I'm going to spill things on my top. <laughs> but I'm not going to use the suggested rick rack on the bib like it, the pattern suggests because I'm not really big on Rick Rack or the bottom ruffle for that matter. So anyway, here's the fabric I intend to use. I actually, they're actually bed sheets I bought at Goodwill for a buck each. I really like this leaf pattern and the floral. Yeah, and this floral one with this green I thought would go well together for the contrast because I do intend to make at least a couple aprons that way. Although I think I'll use the other fabric for a third apron and just use it on its own. Kind of like the other option that I didn't mention on the front of the packet. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's get started. So, so far I've only done the ones that need to be cut in the fold. And now all the pieces that don't. This is going to take a while, isn't it? So done with the green. And now I need to repeat the whole process with the other two fabrics. And then I'll call it a day. Okay, all the pieces are cut I cut out yesterday. So for three different aprons, one of them will be plain, which is the same color, the same fabric used for the pockets as well as the pocket bindings and so no need for band for the front of the skirt because you know why bother and the other two since i'm going to do contrast i'm going to switch the pockets around but first i need to iron <laughs> So I'm ironing down one side of the bindings for the pockets. The other side does not need to be done. Did I mention I don't really like ironing very much? But sometimes it's necessary. So those are done. <laughs> I also pressed the pockets while it was added. You know 
notice how this one has one pocket and the others all have two. Yeah, we're definitely going for two. So I'm pinning the binding to the front of the pockets. And sewing it down. After sewing it down, I whipped it around the other side and sewed the other side in place. This was surprisingly easy, but now we have to do all the others. Okay, the pockets are ready, so now I'm getting ready to do the skirts. You do call it the skirt, right, on the apron? Anyway, it's really easy. It's just the three panels, the front panel and the two sides. So skirt's been sewed up and now I'm ready to you know, have to add the pockets. I probably should iron down the outside of it, but instead I'm honestly I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna fold it under and then pin it in place. The top portion needs to be basted in place. So I'll do that a little later. Now it's all ready to go under the sewing machine. I know I need to re-iron it. It got all wrinkly on the... I'm not even sure how. And there we have it, a pocket. I love how big these are. They're just, look at all that space. I still need to base the top, I know. And so the other one on, as well as the other ones. <laughs> this is gonna take a while, isn't it? Oh, bye. And here we are, I finished all the pockets yesterday. For this one as well as the other two. I know it looks weird since it's not gathered up yet, but you know. That is what it is. I think I forgot to mention that I didn't need to hem the bottom of this one because I made use of the existing hem from the sheet. But I wasn't able to do that with this one, so I had to make my own. And yeah, before anybody says anything, I know my hem's kind of crooked. Yeah. I'll do. Now we need to sew the ba the decorative band on. I'm glad I only have to do this for two of them instead of all three, honestly. Especially because the instructions, the original instructions are actually really complicated in how to do this part. So I admit I'm not going to follow the actual instructions, but I'll explain that in a minute. First I need to sew the pieces together. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is pin it just below the pockets and sew on this bottom portion right here, and then fold it over. And then just kind of tuck in the under and top stitch it down. Believe me, the instructions have you do like multiple steps to pretty much get the same result. This is much simpler, and I like simple, sometimes. So 
Okay, now I just need to fold it down, tuck it under, and pin into place to sew it. Okay, now that's done, let's, let's get to gathering the top. I normally like to gather things by hand because honestly I'm afraid of messing up on the machine, but I'm going to give it a try at least this once. better than I thought it would but honestly I think it looks better when I do it by hand so now I'm just working on the straps two straps ready to go. Now the instructions say to base these straps to the front of the bib, which I don't know why it seems strange to me, even though I know it makes sense, given what I'm supposed to do afterwards, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. There's a lot of basing done in this pattern. So now that they're basically in place, then I'm supposed to sew the rest of the, of the bed. Make sure the straps aren't in the way when I pin it down. I definitely do not want to have to undo this part. Been sewn and turned right side out, and here we are. And now to base it to the front of the waistband. And then I'm going to sew it in place. And there we are. This looks like a real apron. I'm so proud. But I still need to make the ties, so let's get on with that. Before I can finish with the waistband, I have to attach the ties, which means they have to be prepared. And I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to hand them on the outside starting with the end because I find that easier. And then on the opposite end, it just gets gathered and then pinned into place, or basted into place really, match the little markings I made before it then gets rolled. So let's get started. So the ties are ready to be added, and like I said, I have to line them up with the markings on the gathering end. 
Wait, which one goes on what side? Oh yeah, okay. So I'm going to pin them in place. I missed them. Am I saying that right? Uh oh. I just realized I forgot to hem the sides. <laughs> it looks like I'm going to have to do that first. But honestly, I'm just going to kind of quick fold it as I go on the machine. <laughs> last minute hands. Now back to what we were doing. Okay, the tie is in place and so now we can finish the waistband. I'm actually almost finished, so all I need to do is kind of roll down the base, uh, roll down the waistband and so it top stitch all around pretty much. Let me pin this real quick. And then once that's done, it's just a matter of sewing the other end of the straps and then we're done. So you guys don't really need to see me take the trouble to do this, do you? No, not after all I've put you through. Let's just get to the end, okay? Bye! How do you think we drew that? <laughs> that felt a good time. What? What? Anyway, thank you for watching and have a nice day.